Epidural stimulation is a procedure where electrode will be implanted above spinal cord, typically below the level of injury at the present time, in order to activate the areas which are responsible for motor control of lower extremities. Just recently, it was discovered that by epidural stimulation, we also can excite circuits within the spinal cord, which is responsible for motor control and also improvement in autonomic dysfunctions that people with spinal cord injury commonly experiencing. That include improvement in the bladder, bowel functions, improvement in the management of arterial blood pressure dysfunctions, and amazingly also improvement in sexual function of individuals who underwent these procedures. It's a very crucial question to understand how epidural stimulation works. In a simple way, electrical stimuli will activate fibers and neurons within the spinal cord, and therefore then these structures produce stimuli sending to periphery, muscles, blood vessels, which eventually result to the stimuli applied to the spinal cord. Epidural stimulation produces more physiological response. It activates motor neurons within the spinal cord, which will send signal to the muscle, and muscle will contract. Functional electrical stimulation electrode positions directly in the muscle or above the muscle, and functional electrical stimulation produces direct activation of the muscle. In order to improve motor function after the long period of paralysis, patient should expect that with epidural stimulation, even there is a restoration of voluntary movement, but person have to go back to retrain his low limbs to ambulate properly, to coordinate movements again, and that's why this is what expected. We do know from the previous history of implantation of epidural stimulation for the pain management, it's a safe procedure. I think the surgery itself is about an hour and a half tops. And then, you know, they spend a little bit of time looking at the placement and all that. So I think you're in for about three, just over three plus hours. Yeah, it was a little bit of the unknown, but knowing that it was cutting edge and an opportunity to get some sort of movement back, it was a borderline emotional. I mean, you haven't seen those movements for, in my case, four years. And all of a sudden now you're seeing that. And again, your mind starts to go, wow, how far can this go, right? So yeah, it was, it was great. I know that majority of my patients, and this known from other studies, what is number one priority for recovery? It's not actually ambulation. It's a recovery of autonomic dysfunctions. Bladder was really good improvement right at the beginning. It's kind of tapered off a little bit. Bowel was much better improved off the beginning and stayed consistent all the way through. If you've got to spend an hour and a half in, in the bathroom in the morning, well, you've got to back your day up just that much more. So if now you can do that in 20 minutes, well, it's, it's another hour in bed. So that's probably the, the hidden benefit to it, right? Although epidural stimulation showed very interesting effects on motor function, autonomic functions after spinal cord injury, we have to be cautious. We are only at the beginning of understanding what this therapy can result. We still have to investigate what is the long-term effects of this therapy as well. I think nobody wants to be told that, hey, you have this, or this has happened to you, and there's, there's no advancement, it's, so just get used to where you are. And people want to think that there is, there is an opportunity, there is some hope, and uh, you know, have realistic expectations, but never give up on hope.